$42 million, or 0.35% of the total operating budget, is the amount the FAA allocates to the Office of Commercial Space Transportation in fiscal year 2024. This is a surprisingly low number, given that commercial space is growing more aggressively than aviation. So, what's the solution? Calling for more funding? Increased staff? Or simply take the FAA out of space? Find out everything in TechMaps Today episode. The Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, has been the focus of criticism for some time now due to its obsolescence and the red tape, both of which have prevented them from keeping up with the growing innovation in the aerospace sector. As the pioneer in the wave of space commercialization, it will not be unfathomable if SpaceX becomes the most vulnerable victim of the U.S. federal agency. Elon Musk has been quite vocal about the administration's attempts to marginalize his company, which has made him become Trump's biggest cheerleader. And of course, Democrats don't like that. Relations between SpaceX and the FAA came to a head when the FAA intentionally delayed Starship's fifth flight while continuously imposing financial penalties on the company for petty matters that had nothing to do with safety. This increasingly demonstrates that, in addition to failing in its management role, the agency also shows its serious shortcomings in distinguishing between space and politics. Their actions are now counterproductive to the space sector, which is developing more aggressively than the aviation sector, something even Congress can agree on. So what's the solution in this case? Yeah, getting them out of space. This is truly a hot topic that is given to the discussion between Ellie in space and Congressman Kevin Kiley. Kiley, during a Transportation Committee September hearing, pressed Whitaker on whether the FAA is placing undue scrutiny on SpaceX. He later sent a letter to FAA Administrator Michael Whitaker over his false claims about SpaceX during that hearing. I think it's one of the reasons why we just need to get the FAA out of the picture. Um, we're working on some legislation right now that will do that. This stems from an April 23rd meeting, where the FAA's Commercial Space Transportation Advisory Committee, Comstack, unanimously approved a recommendation that the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation, or AST, be moved out of the FAA and turned into a standalone organization directly under the Secretary of Transportation. Apparently, that step of Comstack is in the bingo card of many people not except me. Back to the history. The Office of Commercial Space Transportation was established in 1984 as a standalone office under the Secretary of Transportation. It was moved within the FAA in 1995 as part of a reinventing government initiative by the Clinton administration. The FAA initially was a good host for the office, but since the industry's demand significantly increased, the FAA has failed to keep up with the change, leading to their derailment. Can you imagine that by 2024, when the reusable rocket launch operation occurs much more frequently, leading the U.S. to the top of the world in this field, space still remains a low priority for the FAA? 0.35%. Yes, exactly. 0.35% is the percentage of the overall operating budget of the FAA that AST received. It is equivalent to $42 million. The AST workforce is a similar share of the overall agency as well. This stinginess of the U.S. federal agency reflects the low priority they place on space activities. So far, they keep their mind that space is not inherently the FAA's core business, which is just added to their portfolio because it also requires airspace for launches. No doubt they view space companies as a minority. Not only quantity, the quality is also a big deal. Not by chance do people call them bureaucrats who like to work nine to five at their own pace. It's in contrast to the crazy working pace at SpaceX. With a goal of continuous innovation and creativity, SpaceX has increased its flight rate exponentially, placing an exceptional burden on FAA staff, which requires them to work overtime and weekends. However, this overload didn't work, and in March, the agency had to request a large funding increase for the Commercial Space Office. The given number in its fiscal year 2025 budget proposal released March 11th is $57.13 million. That is a 36% increase from the $42.018 million AST received in the final fiscal year 2024 spending bill. A large portion of that increase, $7.9 million, would go towards hiring additional staff to support launch and re-entry licensing, 
and oversight of those activities. AST expected to grow to 157 people by the end of 2024, but was looking for additional funding in 2025 to hire more staff. At this point, one wonders whether the FAA will utilize those resources effectively. We just know that instead of reducing the number of staff needed through lessening red tape, they have added the complexity of an already cumbersome bureaucracy that SpaceX complained about multiple times recently. Unfortunately, we continue to be stuck in a reality where it takes longer to do the government paperwork to license a rocket launch than it does to design and build the actual hardware. Worse yet, they are using their position of trust to engage in politically motivated behavior rather than focusing on safety. FAA Administrator Whitaker made several incorrect statements today regarding SpaceX. In fact, every statement he made to Congress was incorrect. It is deeply concerning that the administrator does not appear to have accurate information immediately available to him with respect to SpaceX licensing matters, SpaceX wrote. Based on all of the above analysis, can we continue to have confidence in the FAA's ability to regulate space operations? Or should they withdraw from the commercial spaceflight field and devote all their resources to their core business, commercial aviation? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Feel free to leave a comment below. SpaceX's concerns regarding the FAA's process were stated to Congress for the first time last October. At a hearing on commercial space regulations last October, SpaceX executive William Gerstenmeier, the company's vice president for build and reliability, delivered the warning to the Senate Subcommittee on Space and Science. The remarks come as SpaceX was facing an environmental review by the Fish and Wildlife Service and a safety review by the FAA of plans to launch Starship Flight 2. It's, it's a shame when our hardware is ready to fly and we're not able to go fly because of regulations or re-review. Noting that SpaceX has been ready for a month to launch the next Starship test flight. Licensing, including environmental approval, often takes longer than rocket development. This should never happen and it's only getting worse. An unnecessary bureaucracy that has nothing to do with public safety. During the hearing, Gersten Meyer did recommend that the FAA double the staff in the licensing division of its Office of Commercial Space Transportation. In addition, the FAA should be given accelerated hiring authority to draw from the best pool of candidates. Staffing has been a big problem for the FAA for a while, the consequences of which were clearly evident in SpaceX's arduous two-year journey to get its initial Starship launch license. 500 days is the total of time that the U.S. federal agency spent to review a single launch license application for Starship's maiden flight. As they said, that is the longest the agency has spent on a single launch license application. The FAA explained that extended time was due to the complexity of the application and the size of the vehicle, the largest ever to seek a commercial launch license. That created a strain on the resources available to the agency to both review that application and work on other license applications. Despite SpaceX's efforts to raise the alarm, the FAA's progress on resolving the issue has been slow. Clearly, it is an unacceptable thing. For nearly two years, SpaceX has voiced its concerns with the FAA's inability to keep pace with the commercial spaceflight industry. It is clear that the agency lacks the resources to timely review licensing materials, but also focuses its limited resources on areas unrelated to public safety. These distractions continue to directly threaten national priorities and undercut American industry's ability to innovate. There are about nearly 45,000 staff to oversee and manage the national airspace system in the FAA, three times SpaceX's workforce of about 13,000 employees. Okay, I know that the FAA's amount of work is very huge as they are responsible for regulating all aspects of civil aviation in the U.S. However, despite tons of work and limited employees, the FAA still has enough resources to take care of little things on SpaceX's rockets that, you know, are unrelated to public safety. It would be a time bomb for America, and Elon Musk pointed the finger at it directly. America is being smothered by ever larger mountains of irrational regulations, from ever more new agencies that serve no purpose, apart from the aggrandizement of bureaucrats. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.